This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2014 Lexus GS350 all-wheel drive. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6, down below is a six-speed automatic transmission. Guys, I am super excited to be driving this here GS for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I haven't driven the GS yet of any generation and I'm very excited to do so. The second reason I'm excited to drive the GS is the fact that I think this car looks great, and I'll talk about that with the exterior. I think it really looks fabulous. However, there are some interior quirks that I'm not a fan of. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. Now, before we get on to the rest of the video, if you guys are interested in selling your car, please click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com will buy your car with a salvage title, good title, running, non-running, whatever it is, Please go support the channel by clicking the link in the description below. You can get a fast and easy quote for free and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. So let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6. Makes over 300 horsepower. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. It's nothing to thumb your nose at. It's actually a pretty nice power band and I'll show you guys once the car is warmed up here in a second what that power is like. This is the same engine you'll find in pretty much the IS350s, the Toyota Siennas before they went hybrid in 2021. The Camry comes with this option. And actually, really, if you wanna squint your eyes a little bit, this is the engine that is in the Lotus Evora. It is a Toyota 3.5 liter V6 that is found in the Lotus Evora. Of course, they supercharged for the 400 model, like the one you're seeing on screen, but uh, the roots are the same. Same roots, different plant, I'd like to say. So we are warmed up here out on the test track. We will put it over into Sport Plus. And uh, I do have paddle shifters, but I'm not going to do that. I'll crack the window for a little bit of sound. Um, remember, it is all-wheel drive. <laughs> it packs a very throaty punch. For a not really a sports sedan. Yes, this has the F Sport package, but this is not the GSF. This is not the performance version. For being a non-performance version, that feels good. It makes a solid amount of power. It delivers a solid kick, and I'm really, really happy with it. I will also put the miles per gallon up on the screen. Nothing too crazy. Again, you have to remember that it's an all-wheel drive V6 sedan, so miles per gallon are not its top priority. There is a hybrid version, so if you love the look of it, you like the size of it, you can find these in hybrid as well. Now, like I said, Peridot, it is a six-speed automatic transmission. However, in 2014, the GS sort of actually split. If you got the rear-wheel drive version, in 2014, they started offering an eight-speed automatic transmission. So if you get rear-wheel drive, you get an eight-speed. If you get all-wheel drive, you get a six-speed. And if you get the H, the 350H, which is a hybrid, you get a CVT. So there's a bunch of different transmission choices from the GS. However, this is the six-speed. I don't mind it. It's shifting well. It's shifting when it's supposed to. I haven't noticed anything. As you guys saw on that poll or that acceleration test, it did great. It shifted right at red line for, you know, that sportiness. It didn't cut me short of any power and so I can't really knock it too hard. Last but not least this is the all-wheel drive GS which would honestly tickle my fancy because living here in the Midwest it is December and we are expecting these sort of conditions any day now and so all-wheel drive just gives me a little bit better peace of mind. I know people are like oh but rear-wheel drive with good snow tires is just as good. Yeah but if I got all-wheel drive with snow tires I mean that's the king of the castle right there. So I like the all-wheel drive. Now let's talk about the interior. We have a bunch to go through, great and terrible. In front of me, I have four main gauges. On the far left is my coolant temperature, then my tachometer, and on the right, I have my speedometer and my fuel. In the center, I do get a little display. I can have it tell me the outside temperature, what mode I'm in, eco mode, current MPG, MPG after refueling, average MPG, average speed, cruising range, tire pressure, and my settings, 
which cannot be changed while driving. It is a pretty basic screen. However, you have to remember that this car came out six years ago, just before the era where there are screens everywhere. For instance, I reviewed the 2021 Nissan Rogue that has all digital gauges as well as a digital center screen. It's screens everywhere, screens, screens, screens. This is a little bit before that time. And so I can't knock it too hard for having a tiny screen in the gauges. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume commands, skip track and mode. And on the right, I have my voice commands, back phone options and display button for that gauge screen. Now the steering wheel is an F Sport steering wheel. So the F Sport package is really just a trim package for the GS350. It comes with the steering wheel, nicer seats, nicer wheels, badges on the fender, and that's really about it. On the back of the steering wheel, I do have paddle shifters as well, which are nice, but the transmission doesn't really shift fast enough to really warrant them, so it is what it is. To the left of me, I have my traction control off, heated steering wheel, blind spot monitoring, and, save the best for last, my headlight washers, of which... They don't want to work. On the door, I have three different memory seat settings, which is very, very nice. And then of course I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. However, interestingly, my mirrors have an auto button. Very, very interesting there. Moving into the center, we have our giant display. This is a very large display for a vehicle of this age. This is pretty commonplace here in 2020, but this large of a screen was less so common six years ago. What I really like about it is the fact that it has this nice hood going over it. So on this bright, bright morning, I get a little bit of washing out because of the direct sunlight, but not a whole lot because of that big hood. That being said, let's talk about the actual system itself. I do have Bluetooth audio and I can do aux in as well as an iPod hookup and of course satellite radio, things like that. I think this system is okay. It's a little bit clunky. And the reason it's clunky is the way that you control it. And we'll talk about that later on. But it feels very PlayStation 2 to me, if that makes sense. If anyone out there used to own a PlayStation 2, the clicks and beeps and the noises it makes when you select different things or you can't select something so it like rejects you, those noises, I'll place them here in a second, just sound very PlayStation 2 to me. Take a listen. That being said, I think the system is all right. The navigation is kind of slow to update. It's sort of choppy, which I feel like would get a little annoying. And overall, like I said earlier, it's an okay system. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm not absolutely repulsed by it. However, I am repulsed by the way that you control it. And again, we'll talk about that later on. Coming down below that screen, I do have two climate control vents and a nice analog clock. I really like the look of this. I think this is really classy and you only find analog clocks in luxury vehicles. Just off the top of my head, Infinities come with analog clocks like this as well as Porsches. So if Lexus is being compared with Porsche, that means they're doing something right. Down below that clock, I do have my radio. I do have a CD player and then I have my climate controls. Couple interesting things about the climate controls here. First of all, I have auto. I do have dual zone, which is very nice. But I do have this little ghost button. That's at least what I call it. Basically, when you hit this button, you're telling the car that no one is sitting in the back seats. So the car will not waste its time trying to heat up the back seats and it'll more efficiently send its resources to the front seats to either heat you up faster or cool you down faster. I really, really like that. I think it's an efficiency button that should be in most cars but really to this day still isn't. Down below that, I do have my heated and cooled seat options, which is very, very nice, as well as I can set them to auto, which is also very, very nice. I can actually automatically set if it'll warm me up or cool me down with my seat. I assume it runs off of the climate control settings in the vehicle. Then I have two cup holders that has this nice closing lid, makes it look nice. Then we get into the center controls. I'll talk about the shifter first on the left. The shifter is pretty much every shifter you'll find in every Toyota product from 2000 till just about last year. They use, I, I call this the jigsaw shifter because there's no direct path between gears. It's a safety measure. So right now I'm in drive. I can't move it forward or back in order to get into neutral. I have to move it up and then reverse is up and over. It's to save money on clicking a button when you shift. I don't mind it. It is what it is. 
down below that, I do have my drive mode button. So I have really four different drive modes, four or five, depending on how you look at it. I have eco mode and little displays come up on the dash as well, which I really, really like. So I have eco mode, then I have sport, then I have sport plus. The thing I find funny about sport plus is the fact that when you hit sport plus, it comes up on the screen with like explaining to you like what a sh strut is like dampening oil coil spring shaft like okay like i guess i got a, a lesson it does stiffen up the steering quite a bit it does stiffen up the suspension a little bit and of course sport plus is going to be your performance mode push it down for normal mode unfortunately i don't get any type of graphic for normal mode and then i do have a snow mode as well so for snow mode, it just comes up on the center gauge. I wish it had a little bit more fanfare for snow mode, but it is what it is. Now moving over to the right, and this is everything wrong with the Lexus. Up at the top, I have the menu, map, voice, and scroll button. That's fine. But then I have this ridiculous joystick. Now, the thought process behind this joystick is that it works like the mouse pad of a laptop. Just use two fingers. They even put this nice armrest for your hand. You rest your two fingers on it and you can select. Couple things wrong with this. First of all, it has terrible tactile feedback. It's not very linear. I can push it the exact same way three different times and it'll do three different things on screen. One click does not always mean one click. And so it just doesn't feel good. It kind of feels like I'm just moving my finger around in a jar of chunky peanut butter. It's, it's not good. The second reason I dislike it is because it takes a lot of thought to do something and so while i'm driving if i'm going on the highway doing 65 miles an hour i don't want to be staring down trying to figure out oh did i press it one too many times is it okay did, did i do good i don't want to have to worry about that and so i can't really tell what i'm doing without looking at it and that to me is stupid and dangerous however one thing i do like about the joystick is once you do click down on it actually you probably just heard it actually clicking down selecting something that is a very satisfying click i will give it that however the whole process of everything and it, it, it's not free flowing enough to be comfortable but it's not rigid enough to give me enough tactile feedback it's this weird middle ground and for years i've been saying that this joystick is terrible in lexus products and i'm glad that they've finally moved away from it here in the 2020s they don't use this system anymore and thank whatever mighty power you believe in because this is just terrible. I hate it. That being said, down below it, I do have two interesting buttons. I do have my parking sensors off as well as the rear sunshade. So it is a power rear sunshade as you're seeing behind me. I will now turn it on. And the interesting thing about this sunshade is actually here. I'll pull up here. I'll put the car into reverse. Watch what happens when I put it in reverse. The sunshade automatically goes down in reverse. Now I do have a backup camera, which is decent. I didn't talk about it earlier. The backup camera is okay. Um, it has okay quality, but it has a great field of vision. It's very easy to see out of, which is nice. But once now I'm back in drive, we get moving here. We give it a second because it wants to make sure. There it goes. Starts going back up. Wants to make sure that you're not going to throw it back into reverse and just mess it all up. So that is a very nice feature. First of all, the sunshade. I love sunshades in vehicles. That's only something found in luxury vehicles. But I, I think it's really cool that when you put it in reverse, it goes down to give you extra visibility and be as safe as possible. Now we got to talk about the seats. Like I said, they are memory. They are heated. They are cooled. They are power. I like them a lot. Uh, they're very, very comfortable seats. I'm enjoying myself quite a bit. But interestingly, when I first got into the GS, I thought the seats were kind of hard. Now I've changed my mind since I've been driving this car for about an hour. I haven't noticed the hard seats again, but when I first plopped myself down, they felt rather stiff. But before we get to the back seat review, first of all, I do have a sunroof. It's a decent size. It's nothing too crazy, but at least I get one. Now let's talk about the back seats. All right, so we're in the back of the 2014 Lexus GS 350 all-wheel drive. And what's interesting about these seats is they really, truly feel like bucket seats. 
I feel myself sort of sinking back into them, but I also have these decently high bolsters on the sides keeping me in, especially with the center console down. I really feel like I am just plopped into this little area. That being said, knee room is okay. My knees do touch the front seats if I sort of move them together, but otherwise they're fine. Center console has a little bit of storage, a little sort of pad here, and then as you can see on camera, cup holders that come out of the middle. That being said, I do have two vents down here and I do have a 12 volt, 120 watt outlet down below, which is very nice. I'll put this up, but honestly, I'm very, very surprised, very shocked at these seats because they really feel like racing bucket seats, which it's good for me. However, if you're going to be moving a lot of people around, uh, people are always going to be sitting back here. One, I would look at Lexus LS series because that's a longer chassis, you're gonna have a little bit better room in the back, but also getting in and out of these seats is a little bit, just ever so slightly a little bit harder than other Lexus products. So if you have a lot of elderly that you deal with or children, um, you know, either end of the spectrum, uh, this might be a little bit tricky for them to get in and out of. Now we'll take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the GS350. I do have a little trunk popper here. However, it does not lift it all the way up. It just pops it, lift it like this. Here I have the floor mats. I like that they say Lexus GS. Just sets it apart from other Lexuses. I do have some tie downs back here. That's really it. It's a decently sizable trunk. I have a nice little cargo net there. Other than that, nothing too impressive, but it is a larger sedan, so it has a pretty large trunk. Now we gotta talk about the looks, my favorite part of the Lexus GS. I think this thing looks muscular. I think it looks great. I think it looks tuned. I think it looks honestly rather dashing. I think it looks great. I think Lexus really hit their stride with styling during this time. I like the way that the ISFs look, GSFs, RCFs, I think they all look great. And this isn't the performance version, but I think it still has that very muscular appearance. It's luxurious, but also, you know, it'll take you out back if you need to. Let's let the car take me out back. <laughs> so let's talk about the GS in total. What is my first driving experience in a Lexus GS350 like? Well, I honestly love driving it. I love the driving feel of it. When I put it into sport mode, it stiffens up that steering and it makes it a very entertaining and very engaging driving experience. If I bought one of these and took it down a twisty road one day after work, I would have fun. In the same respect, going out on date night, this is a perfect car for date night. Very luxurious, very calm and collected. In the same way that this thing will sit on the highway at whatever speed you want it to do, it'll be very comfortable and can make a great commuter car. This really is a great all around vehicle, especially with that all wheel drive. The V6 has plenty of horsepower for whatever you want it to do. I honestly believe that this car would be one of the true greats if it weren't for that stupid, stupid infotainment system. The joystick sucks. The infotainment is just, ugh. and that's a shame because this car has run nine tenths of the race and it trips and falls within sight of the finish line. This should have been a 10 out of 10. It looks great, it drives great, I love it. But the thought of getting in this car every morning and dealing with this baloney turns me away from this car. I wish that there was some aftermarket company that would come in and just replace this with literally anything. Put a Top Gun style joystick from an F-16 right there. That would honestly be better than this stupid button. You ruined this car, joystick. You ruined this car. I couldn't imagine having to deal with this malarkey every day. And that's what turns me away from the GS350. But if you can put up with that joystick, which I clearly can't, which is probably rooted in some deep down trauma I haven't dealt with, then the GS350 is a great, fantastic car that you will love. It has Toyota reliability, has power, luxurious, all-wheel drive, stylish. What more can you ask for? Well, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville. This is one of their used cars. 
on the lot. They have hundreds of used cars on the lot at all times. I saw this when I pulled in and I said, wow, that's a good looking vehicle. I got to drive that. And so I did. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please go check out Toyota Naperville. Like I said, hundreds of cars on the lot, new and used. If Toyotas are not your thing, if Lexuses are not your thing, they have tons of other products available. So please go check them out. I think they'll have a car for you. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.